Hello, my name is Gary Smith. Uh, I'm here at General Motors R&D. I'm the executive director responsible, in fact, for all of the North American science labs. Within these labs, we do all of the vehicle level research for the corporation, both on the, the body side, on the batteries, as well as all of the propulsion systems, uh, right through from today's engines, you know, gasoline engines, diesel engines, right through to uh, the hybrid systems, the range extenders, and actually up to the fuel cells as well. Well, modeling the simulation is, it's, first of all, it's critical to our research. In fact, it's not just the research, but it's the whole engineering of the vehicle. Um, our vehicles today are very, very complex. We're getting more and more stringent requirements, both from the government and, in fact, from the consumer as well. And so that's driving a lot more complexity into the vehicles, and that's driving the requirement to be doing a lot more testing and a lot more simulation. On the mainstream propulsion, what you're seeing is a real trend towards, again, dramatically improving the efficiency of the conventional gasoline and diesel engine. On the gasoline side, you're seeing the industry moving from eight cylinders to six cylinders to four cylinders. They're improving the performance of those four cylinders. So again, the customer's getting the performance that they're used to with the six cylinder or with the four cylinder. So we're downsizing the engines and we're turbocharging the engines. We're going with direct injection. And a very good example of that is the cruise. We have the Eco model here in North America with a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine getting 42 miles per gallon on the highway. If you look at our successes, again, it really drives back to energy diversity and energy efficiency. First of all, in the energy diversity, we've introduced, in fact, in North America to date, we have about six million flex fuel vehicles, vehicles that can actually run on 85% ethanol. Globally, we have another three million or so, mostly in Brazil, that can run on 100% ethanol. Very good example of how we're diversifying off of petroleum. And then if you look at the successes we have with respect to improving the efficiency of the propulsion system, we have put a tremendous amount of research and you're now seeing that coming into our vehicles uh, as we continue to introduce more and more hybrid vehicles. Very good example is our two-mode hybrid, it's our 300 volt hybrid, heavy hybrid, that we introduced in 2008 in our SUVs and trucks. That resulted in about a 40% increase. Today's Tahoe with a hybrid, a 300 volt hybrid system, gets about 40% better fuel economy, city, city fuel economy, compared to the non-hybrid. Another example is our mild hybrid system. We introduced it this year, in fact, in our Buick LaCrosse and the Regal. It's a 15 kilowatt system. If I compare it to the previous model of the Regal, we're getting about a 25% increase in fuel efficiency. Well, with the Volt, it's a range extended EV. It runs for about 25 to 50 miles, depending on the conditions, depending on whether you're running an air conditioner, etc. All electric, so it's a pure electric vehicle. But after the 50 miles, if you run out of electricity, there's a 1.4 liter engine that comes on and charges the battery. You have the same performance running with electricity as you have with the engine on. So that the customer doesn't feel any difference, has the same acceleration, the same performance. So for most people's driving, the engine never comes on. It's a pure electric vehicle, but you've removed the range anxiety. You've given the customer all of the attributes, all of the requirements that they have set for their vehicle. There's no compromises. The whole propulsion system is a very complex one because the engine is more like an APU in this situation. The engine's not driving the wheels, the engine's actually charging the batteries again. And really the complexity of it is in the, the integration of all of those systems together to make it seamless to the customer. You think about the complexity of those systems and the requirements that we have to meet both from a regulation perspective and from you know, meeting the customer requirements, that really has required us to have state-of-the-art modeling capability to allow us to execute those programs. Math-based modeling and simulation is absolutely critical to our industry. We use it extensively today in vehicle development and clearly in the propulsion system development. We would not be able to provide the products we have today 
without math-based capability. But given the exponential growth of what we're delivering to our customers across many, many different countries, it's critical that we continue to develop the state of the art of that capability and that we use that capability to develop better products faster and at a cost that our customer can afford.